Back in 2014, when I was a teenager, I was still living in my small hometown in Europe, in Bulgaria. Me and my childhood friends, two boys and one girl, were occasionally taking walks along the highway, which wasn't used that frequently. Most of the time, we would see a few trucks pass by, but it wasn't full of traffic, and it was very close to where we lived. So it was just a thing we often did. On the left side of it, there were houses, and on the right, there was a huge empty field with some hills there. But most of the land was empty, full of grass. On the right side where the field was, there was an old abandoned canal which wasn't used since the early 90s. It was full of trash, sticks, and it was also used to dispose bones of farm animals, such as goats and sheep. But there weren't so many. Creepy, yeah, but we knew they were from animals. We visited it before during daytime. Nothing impressive, really. Just an empty hole. One ordinary night, we decided to go on another walk along this highway, and we went to the end of it once and then came back. So we got bored since we're always doing the same thing. Someone gave the idea to go along the small dirt road, which is alongside the abandoned canal, and we didn't give it much thought. Now, keep in mind that on the highway, there are street lights, but on the small dirt road alongside the canal, there's no lights coming from anywhere. It was a full moon as far as I remember, since it wasn't pitch black night as we could see where we were going without using our phones for light. Anyways, we were walking, joking, laughing, and just having some good times really. One of the boys went ahead of us, since he was walking faster. Me, the other boy, and the other girl were behind him, walking a bit slower. At the middle of the dirt road, the three of us decided to go back to the well-lit area of the highway and called the other guy to come back as well. A few minutes passed and the first boy who was ahead was almost at the end of the dirt road when he started running towards us screaming, guys, run. So instinctively, we all turned around to see what was happening and we just froze. We saw him running very fast towards us, but there was something behind him following him. Everyone managed to brush it off and run towards the highway, except me. I stood there for a few more seconds, trying to figure out what we were witnessing. It was very hard to describe. It was a figure that was somehow shining bright white light, and it was moving up and down, coming towards us. When I realized I couldn't figure out what I was seeing, I turned my back towards it and ran so fast that I even passed the others, even though they started running before me. We didn't stop until we reached the streetlights, and when we did, we turned around. There was nothing behind us anymore. We were terrified at first, but then we just dropped the subject and never spoke of it again. None of us shared this with anybody outside of our childhood group since we thought people would start rumors that we're taking drugs, etc., since it was a very small town. A couple of years went by, we grew up, and everyone started moving out to the bigger cities in the area. So at one point, I was the only person from our childhood group left in our hometown, since I was the youngest of us four. This happened in 2017. I was hanging outside in my hometown with some friends, a completely different group of people, who were never close with my childhood friends at any point. We started talking about random stuff. Then it got dark outside, and one of the guys suggested that we should share spooky stories. Then he started talking and shared how recently he and three other boys were hanging out during the night, alongside the dirt road next to the abandoned canal. At this point, I was all ears. He then proceeded to describe how exactly the same thing happened to them. How they were just hanging out there and then some weird shining figure, bright white, came towards them. They got scared, ran away, and then when they looked back, the figure had disappeared. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. My jaw dropped to the ground. Then I shared that a couple of years back, me and three other people experienced the exact same thing in the very same place. 
and asked him if anybody of those people talked with him about this and if this is some kind of joke, but it wasn't. The story doesn't exactly end here. I went home that night, still stunned and I barely slept. I kept remembering what happened years ago and trying to figure things out, but thought of nothing that made sense. What we experienced was just unexplainable. So the next day, I decided to share everything with my parents, and I thought that they would just brush it off, say that we were just too scared and imagined something. But to my surprise, they were both just staring at me horrified. I asked them why they were not saying anything and just staring at me. Then they told me how back in the early 90s, when they were teenagers themselves, two kids went missing, a seven-year-old girl and a three-year-old boy. Before they went missing, these kids lived right next door to our apartment, in the house that was facing our balcony. Since it's a small town, everyone thought that the kids would be found soon. But five years passed by and there was no sign of them. Nobody had heard anything. There were no suspects in kidnapping or any leads to what happened to them. Then on the fifth year of their missing, the remains were found in the abandoned canal. And by the evidence found in there, it was concluded that they'd been murdered. But the killer was never found. My parents said that this event shook the community back then. And a lot of people avoided going near that canal since it happened. But curious teens were occasionally visiting it and sharing stories of how they'd seen something unexplainable. However, nobody believed them. To this day, when I visit my hometown and pass by the canal, I feel so uneasy and I just cannot even think going alongside the dirt road after knowing what really happened there. While I was camping at Indian Mound Reservation, I was subject to a ghost or ghosts. I woke in the middle of the night to the sound of someone walking around the tent. This was an old school A-frame canvas tent set up on a pallet-like platform. I also had the chills going from the bottom of my feet up my legs and into my spine. I was in shock because it was the feeling I've gotten before at my haunted house I grew up in. I called out quick, quietly to ask if someone was there and the walking and rustling sound paused momentarily. I then almost froze as the sound was now the sound of a slow walk into the tent, as if someone walked right in the front door. The moonlight through the crack of the tent didn't change its size, so I know it wasn't too dark to see someone walk in, because I would have seen much more lights come in. The ghost walked through the tent and out the other side. My chills were gone, but I was still uneasy because I knew I had just been visited. The name of the campsite is called IMR because it's native land in Wisconsin where burial grounds are visible as mounds. I had recently lost my mother when I was 12 years old. I took it about as well as you could expect a child could. I went through a lot of emotions and found it very hard to cope with the loss of her. One day, I was finally able to stand having friends over for the occasional sleepover. I had one of my best friends at the time stay the night with me. We were both in my room. I was in my bed and he was on the floor beside it. I always slept with the TV on and still do to this day. Now, the TV was on a stand on the foot of my bed. The power cord ran between the wall and my bed, so this cord was practically never touched. In the middle of a random conversation we were having before falling asleep, all of a sudden, the TV shut off. The room then went black, but not for long. To the left of my friend by the foot of his makeshift bed, an orb appeared. Not in an instant flash, but a warm illumination of bright green light. It stood in place and pulsed in brightness slowly. No noise emitted from the source. I was frozen in fear. 
I quietly asked my friend if he saw the light. He said in the most fearful tone, yes, I do, because I'm scared to move. I slowly reached for the remote to the TV that is located on my nightstand. I hit the power button to turn it back on and light up the room. The TV won't turn on and the pulsing light remains. I looked in between the bed and wall and the power cord is out of the socket, roughly a foot away from the outlet. I plug the TV back into the outlet as quick as I could. The TV turns on. As it lights up the room, I turn my attention back to the orb. It slowly dims into nothingness. It's as if it's slowly dissolved into a smaller and smaller source of light until nothing was there. Now keep in mind, I have no source of light in my room that was where the orb was located. The only light sources in my room were two lava lamps that were not plugged in and covered in dust for years of no use. The light bulb fixture by the door and lastly, the TV. I let this story go for years without telling many people, but it remains in the back of my mind as something unexplainable. I would love to think it was my mom trying to maybe comfort me. Perhaps it was her way to say goodbye since I didn't get to at the hospital. My buddy still remembers the incident and assures me it is not a dream that I had. I'm not sure what it was or wasn't. I just know that it happened. I moved out of this house two years ago, but I've experienced ghosts, UFO sightings, and shadow people while living there. When I was eight years old, I moved into this two floor house in the city. As a kid, the first paranormal activity I witnessed was shadow people always running up and down the stairs. I used to be terrified of sleeping with my door closed because I always felt like it was going to be opened by a shadow so I never closed my door. When I used to do homework on my computer, I would always see shadows running a flash up my stairs from the corner of my eyes. For some reason, my house always had a really eerie vibe to it when I was alone or when my parents were sleeping. And the worst part was my backyard. Sometimes I would wake up in the middle of the night hungry. And when I would go to my kitchen and look outside, the kitchen window that was facing the backyard I would get very anxious and get these tension headaches where my eyes would get blurrier and blurrier. I felt like I shouldn't be staring outside, but I would force myself to because I didn't know why it made me feel that way. I would have friends sleep over or hang out with me and they would always tell me that my backyard really creeped them out. I used to be really scared of being in my room alone at night. So I used to watch television in the living room Every night, I would hear footsteps above my living room where my parents' room was. The footsteps sounded like boots walking back and forth. Even my dad acknowledged it, but he always brushed it off and said it was amusing. One night, my best friend had slept over. We wanted to hunt ghosts with my dad's old camera that had night vision. We caught what we thought were orbs. The camera would turn off when we would enter certain rooms. After this night, however, I stopped hearing paranormal activity or seeing any shadow people. As I got older, my fear started going away and I didn't care about my door being closed. The only thing I could never get over was the backyard. But since I stopped spending my days playing in my yard with my neighborhood friends, it stopped affecting me. I even went as far as playing the Ouija board in my room and other parts of my house, but it just never affected me. I used to suffer from terrible sleep paralysis before the Ouija board, but I learned how to control them, so it gave me more incentive to get rid of my fears completely. I found out from my neighbor who lived across the street for many years that my house used to be rented to an old couple who both had died there. That's all I know about its history. Oh yeah, and about the UFO sighting. I went to the movies with friends and had my parents pick me up after. 
When I got home, I stayed in the front yard, staring up at the sky with my mom, and something caught my attention. It was spinning lights that were swinging side to side. I thought it was satellites until the lights started moving the same way a hummingbird moves, jittery and quick. After that, it swooped to the right and disappeared in thin air. I tried thinking of many things it could have been, but no aircraft moves that quick. And it couldn't have been a drone because it literally disappeared. My mom would never admit what she saw, but I'm sure it was a UFO. I didn't sleep at all that night. I have absolutely no idea what is occurring in our apartment and if we should be concerned. My fiance, me and our roommates have been living in this apartment for a year now, but strange things keep happening. At first, it used to just be weird sounds that we would brush off as the cats or the neighbors, since that was the only explanation we had. When the sounds seemed as if they were coming from the adjacent room, we started getting concerned, especially if the cats were with us. We eventually started questioning it and then it quit happening. After it being quiet for about two months, it started again, but it became more than just noises. My fiance was in the kitchen and heard a very audible sigh that sounded like it came from the dining area. In our apartment, the kitchen, dining area and living room are one big room with a counter separating the kitchen and living room. When he turned around, there was no one there, no cat, no one on the balcony, and no one outside after looking through the window. That same week, we were in our bedroom when the faucet in the bathroom turned on by itself. We were very concerned, especially when later that night, my phone flew off the bed. My phone was on the bed and it flew off and landed about two feet away from the bed. It wasn't on the edge of the bed and it moved way too forcefully for it to have been gravity. After that night, I talked to my sister, friends, and mom about the things going on, but then it stopped again. It recently started back again though. It's been quiet for about three months this time. We're hearing weird noises again, but the event that makes me scared is what happened the other day. My fiance got a new bike and he was at the bottom of the stairs outside, messing with the seat. I was standing at the top of the stairs talking to him and also talking to the cats in the living room window. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw something move in our bedroom window, so I immediately looked that way. The blinds were down and completely closed in both bedroom windows. They're side by side, except for one spot where it looked like it was being pulled open, like when you're peeking out to see who's there. Well, after looking for like two seconds, it snapped shut and I looked back over to the living room window to still see both cats. When I went inside, our roommate was sound asleep in his room, so I have absolutely no explanation. I also watch Bob's Burgers on repeat for comfort, and for some reason, 95% of the time when I put it on, it will randomly turn off. We haven't spoken to our roommate about the matter, so I don't know if he has experienced anything, but should we be worried? My fiance and I bought a house in July and have been settling in. It's an oldish house built in the 60s across from a church. The church used to own it at one point, but they were not the last owners. Anyway, my paranormal senses have always been auditory. I have tons of personal paranormal experiences that involve hearing rather than sensing or seeing. And after a few of my scarier encounters, I've kind of learned how to turn it on and off. And I definitely prefer to keep it off. I've been with my fiance for four years and I'm the spooky loving one. He is largely more logical. This matters because I'm about to recount to you his experience. And I want to make it known that I've never heard him say anything like this in our four years together. 
Nothing too weird has happened in the house so far, except the fire alarms keep going off. There are two of them, one in the hallway and one in a back room that's my office, and both of them keep randomly going off. We've replaced the battery, and they're not hooked to the electric in any sort of way, and one still went off the other night, right as we started some intimate acts. Another slightly weird thing, my dog won't go outside. My dog used to living on a mountain. He was raised being outside on his own a good amount of time, and he loves the outdoors. Now, it's sincerely a struggle to get him to go outside to the yard every single day. Sometimes I have to physically push him to the door and out the door. Once he's out there, he stares back inside at me, and it takes me ignoring him and leaving the kitchen for him to finally go out into the yard. So two nights ago, my fiance is having indigestion and wakes up in the middle of the night. He really has to use the bathroom, so he gets up and starts heading through the kitchen towards the hallway. He suddenly stops and gets an overwhelming feeling of don't go down there. And he says it felt like a huge warning and weight on his chest. He said he felt watched as he turned around. He comes back to bed and lays down. Our room is a bonus room the previous owners made out of the garage. He lays awake for hours staring at the ajar door of our room, still feeling like he's being watched with the heavy weight on his chest. He says that at some point, the feeling went away like a sudden whoosh. It just happened, and he felt immediately lighter and was able to fall back asleep. The next morning, I go let the dogs out. They sleep in our spare bedroom halfway down the hall. Our young and dumb dog comes out right away, as she always does. But my dog is laying on the bed, trembling all over. I've only ever seen him like that when there's thunder. He does get up after some coaxing, and does his usual resistance to going out, and he's still trembling all over. I checked the weather, and we had no storms. It was dry outside. Last night, as we go to lay down, my fiancé says he feels that heavy, I'm being watched feeling again. I don't feel it at all. Any ideas what this could be? I'm a mental health therapist and will keep an eye out on my partner, but there's nothing currently to suggest this is a mental health thing for him. He's also not the type to make things up. I certainly believe his experiences. Over the course of the past few years, I've had a few encounters with the paranormal. I hope it's not, but no other explanation is left for me. In 2009, I was in my bed, sleeping, and my parents were also asleep. Sometime in the night, I hear my dad wake up and go to the bathroom, which is right across my bedroom in the hallway. I hear him flush the toilet, and as he was about to leave and go back to sleep, I feel like I'm drowning and can't open my eyes. It was all dark, just like you close your eyes normally. So I yell out, Dad, help. He walks in and shakes me violently to wake up. Once I've opened my eyes, I could see a look of terror on his eyes and my mom behind him, shaking in fear. My entire room was dripping from water. The ceiling, the furniture, the walls, everything was just wet and water was dripping everywhere. Still, no logical explanation to this day. In that same bedroom, sometime after the first incident, my balcony doors would randomly explode every other few nights after midnight, when I would be in deep sleep. I tried staying awake a few times to see if it's my sleeping brain playing tricks on me, and sure enough, I would get startled by the explosion every time no matter if asleep or awake. Exactly after midnight and holy water, my parents are Catholic, would only postpone the explosions for a week or two, then they would come back again. After I moved out to Germany, I would always have nightmares when going to sleep. One night, I stayed out until like 3 a.m. partying and whatnot. I didn't take any alcohol or substances as I was a designated driver. And when I came back to my room, I closed the doors, rolled the blinds, and went to sleep. Sure enough, not even 10 minutes later, I hear footsteps 
heavily draggling themselves around my room. All of a sudden, I hear something playing with the window blinds. They were on the inside of the window, like a cat running its paws across them. After it got bored, the footsteps continued towards my bed and I could feel a slight pull on my blanket. I was covering myself with it from feet to head at this point. And then I could feel something like a weight of a pit bull lay next to me. Around 5am at sunrise, the weight had disappeared and the footsteps stopped. Everything went back to normal and I could barely sleep after such an event. After that, I couldn't sleep in that room without lights. In my current place, I had fallen asleep on my couch after a long day and just covered myself with only a blanket over me. Around 2 or 3 a.m., I woke up to the sound of my doorbell going crazy, but I couldn't move. I closed my eyes and opened them again, and what do I see? A girl, literally like the one from The Ring, standing next to my feet and staring at me. In all that panic and adrenaline, I tried to kick her a few times, but my body wasn't responding to my commands. Later, I'd figured it out that I've literally had my first sleep paralysis in my life. But I think it might be related to my previous experiences. Back in 2012, my family moved to this fairly isolated house in the mountains of Colorado. The house was big, pretty ugly on the outside, and just kind of creepy in general. The first day we moved in, I saw this miniature door that led to the attic. Twelve or so year old me was curious and went up there to explore. But all I found was a tiny piece of paper with a Bible verse on it. Unfortunately, I've completely forgotten which verse it was, but it did creep me out a tiny bit. Anyways, after that, I never personally saw anything weird for at least a year or two. However, my older sister claimed to have had these paranormal experiences fairly often. One time, she said she was laying on her bed, and suddenly this large candle she had on her desk just launched itself across the room, hitting the wall. The glass case shattering everywhere. I personally didn't know what to make of her story, as I never saw it, and I've always been skeptical about any paranormal experiences. Not long after that, she claimed there was a bird right outside her window staring at her. I forget if it was a bat or an owl, but I want to say it was an owl. She acted like it stared at her forever, but once again, I didn't know what to think of it. She isn't one to lie about stuff like that, and she's claimed to have had many other similar experiences in past houses. So either she's just crazy, or for some reason spirits or something like to mess with her. One night, I was trying to sleep when I noticed something move in front of my closet. When I looked, I saw this young girl kind of just float towards me. She didn't seem to move any muscle at all. She was just standing straight up, no facial expressions. At first, she moved very slowly towards me, but her speed got exponentially faster. By the time she reached the end of my bed, she was moving faster than I could run. For some reason, her speed always bothered me but I feel like I can't understate how fast she was going at the end. I jumped out of my bed in pure panic, and then she was gone. I was living in an apartment building in Brooklyn at the time and had been there for about five years when this incident occurred. The building was about a century old and had three floors. There were no apartments on the ground floor, and the second and third floors each had two one-bedrooms. My apartment was on the third floor, and a couple lived in the one next door, the layout of which was identical to mine, just on the other side of the wall. In all, there were six people in the building, including myself, and for a week or so around the holidays this one year, I had the entire building to myself. Everyone else was traveling to visit family. My family lives in New York, so I usually stay put. My next door neighbors asked me to care for their cats while they were gone, 
which I agreed to do. They often did the same for me, and I'd done it for them several times before, so I knew the carts well enough. Beginning the first night that I was alone in the first building, I started hearing voices from the apartment next door. Apart from the fact that no one was supposed to be there, what most unnerved me about it was the voices were whispering and yet sounded nearer than they ought to have. Although the building was old, the walls were pretty substantial and I rarely heard the neighbors when they were home. If we happened to be right across the wall from each other at the same time, I might hear the undertone of a conversation spoken at normal volume, but never distinctly enough to make out words. Using that as a point of comparison, it seemed strange that whispers would carry at this volume, though I still couldn't make out individual words. I was a bit frightened, since I knew no one was staying next door. However, I had expected that it might be a bit creepy to be in the building alone, so perhaps I primed my imagination to play tricks on me. I began coming up with and refuting a series of rationalizations. Voices sometimes carried up from the street in strange ways, and I might be hearing people talking on the sidewalk. Unlikely, since it's winter, there doesn't appear to be anyone outside and all the windows are shut. Maybe the neighbors gave another set of keys to some friends and told them they could hang out there when they wanted to. They'd have mentioned this, and they would have heard people coming up the stairs and opening the door. There could be something wrong with the heat that's causing the pipes to make strange noises. Then why are these sounds only heard at night and regardless of whether the heat is on or off? And so on. I was only able to hear the whispering from a certain spot in the living room, since the bedroom was silent. I was able to put it out of my mind and eventually get to sleep. I woke up repeatedly that night from terrible nightmares, though I didn't feel I had much choice but to stay in bed as the thought of getting up and going into, or even passing through the living room, filled me with an abnormal dread. That had never happened before, and the nightmares were unusual for me. Since I rarely remember my dreams, maybe once every two weeks or so, ordinarily, but these were intense and vividly recalled, and they persisted throughout the entire week. The next morning, I went next door to feed the neighbor's cat, Nothing looked out of place, but the cat was behaving strangely. Ordinarily, he was friendly and would run to the door when he heard me coming in before parking himself next to his food bowl. This time, he sat in a corner of the living room, facing the wall, and staring up towards the ceiling. Even after I filled his bowl, he didn't budge, though he would usually bury his face in his food and inhale it. I went over and stroked the back of his neck. He hissed, never looking away from the ceiling. This added to my unease, and for the remaining days, I would only go next door to feed him in the early morning and late afternoon, while it was still light out. The next few days were the same, the cat behaving strangely during the day, though he would eat most of his food between my visits. The whispering sounds from the wall in the evening, and the nightmares at night. The only other strange thing that happened during the daytime was a sudden invasion of cockroaches. During that week, I encountered as many as four or five a day, as many as I would usually see in a year. They're inevitable in New York, and you have to resign yourself to the knowledge that they're tucked away in the walls of old buildings, but it was as if they were being driven from their usual hiding spots and into my apartment. Finally, the neighbors came back though I didn't see them for several days after they returned, and the sound stopped, along with the roaches, thankfully. One night later that week, there was a knock at my door. It was the woman who lived next door, and she was panicked. She said that someone was in her apartment, and she'd called the police. I told her to come in to wait for the cops, locked the door, and asked what happened. She said she had looked out the back window and seen two figures standing on the rooftop of the building below ours, standing perfectly still and staring straight up into her window. She was freaked out and went to the kitchen to call her husband, shutting all the doors behind her. Then she heard whispers from the living room and called the cops, thinking that whomever she'd seen outside had gotten up the fire escape and in through the window. The cops came 
and told us to wait while they checked the apartment. We were peering out into the hall from my apartment. One cop gestured to his ear and mouthed the word voices to the other. They flung open the door, went in with guns drawn and moved from room to room. They said afterward they thought they'd heard someone when they were outside the door, but the apartment was empty with no sign of a forced entry or exit and there was no one on the roof below. The neighbor was so shaken that I didn't think it was the right time to tell her that I'd been hearing strange sounds from her apartment while they were all away, though everything seemed to go back to normal after that. I moved out a couple of months later, but not because of those incidents. A friend who lived nearby had to move and offered to transfer his lease to me. It was a larger and newly refurbished apartment, so I went for it. Since the new place was only a few blocks away, I decided to move the cats last, after the movers had finished. I went back to the empty apartment early that afternoon for the cat, and found him sitting in the kitchen, hissing towards the living room. I'd only ever heard him hiss once or twice before, when I've accidentally come close to his stepping on his tail. I was standing in the kitchen behind him, with my back to the window that overlooked the roof where the neighbor said she'd seen a pair of figures a few months earlier. Without warning, the window shattered. I wheeled around thinking someone must have thrown something at it and expecting to see a rock or a baseball on the floor. But there was nothing there. It was broad daylight and there was no one outside. What's more, I'd noticed that the glass didn't fall onto the floor inside the kitchen but had exploded outward onto the fire escape as if it had been broken from the inside. As I said, I moved because I'd found a better apartment, but I was not sorry to be out of there after all that, and I hustled the cat into the carrier and out the door as quickly as I could. I had to go back for smaller items a few times over the next week, but only during the daylight hours, and I felt a serious unease each time I walked through the door, and I hadn't really experienced while I was living there, with the ex exception of that one week. That's the closest thing to a paranormal experience I've ever had, so I thought I'd share it, though I don't draw any conclusions. As mentioned, I'd been living in that building for about five years before having that experience, and thought it was especially strange that something weird would start so suddenly. I'd be especially interested to hear if anyone has any similar experiences, or thoughts on that in particular. It was probably 2 or 3 a.m. I just woke up in the middle of the night for no reason. It's pretty normal for me to do that. I then just need 15 minutes to fall asleep again. While I was waiting to fall asleep again, I heard my room door open and somebody come in. I have a wooden floor. That would make a creaking sound at the smallest things, so you can pretty much hear a mouse running around. So little was necessary to creak that wooden floor. First, I thought that it was my roommate. He sometimes comes into my room to steal one of my cigarettes. Well, I never caught him doing that, but I'm pretty sure he does it. So I was ready to confront him. So I was waiting for him to do something so I can spot him on the act. So I was waiting and waiting, but he didn't do anything. While I was waiting, my brain that was still a bit sleepy remembered something. My roommate wasn't in the house that day. He told me he was going to a party and then sleeping at a friend's. So I thought, shit, a burglar. And I calmed down and thought it through. Maybe he came back home because his friend didn't want him at his house. Or he has somebody else over. But why is he in my room and just standing there? Is he drunk and is he doing some weird things? Maybe took something and now acting weird? Well, now I was concerned he would do something stupid. So I was about to turn around until I felt a warm breeze on my neck. It felt like somebody was breathing on my neck. I was frozen, goosebumps all over my body. He must have moved and is now breathing down my neck. My bed is in the other corner of my room. He at least had to take three steps to do this, but I didn't hear anything. But I still tried to think rationally. Maybe it's just a breeze. It is the summer and I'm sleeping with my window open. It's probably just a breeze. 
but there was still the problem of my drunk roommate on drugs or a burglar. So now I had to find out what it was. If it was my roommate on drugs, help him. If it was a burglar, just take whatever you want. I'm gonna pretend I'm sleeping. So I made a move to turn around. I was sleeping on the side. My back turned against the door. So I had to do a full 180. While I was halfway turned, I just felt terror, like pure fear. My survival instinct said to me, do not turn around or you will die. I have no idea why I'm thinking that, but it takes my whole willpower not to start shaking out of fear. Because my survival instinct also said, if you move, you are dead. I didn't know what was happening. My brain was thinking what it, it is that is giving my body so much terror without even seeing it, but there was nothing. It didn't make sense. Am I having a panic attack? But why now? I had panic attacks in the past, but they didn't feel like this. I just knew with every fiber of my body, as soon as I moved, this thing would kill me. So until 5 a.m., I was just laying there, full with fear, until it just vanished. All of my fear was gone, like that. As soon as I opened my eyes, I looked at the door. It was wide open, but there was nobody there. I didn't hear anybody leave. My whole body was concentrated on this thing. It couldn't have just left without making a noise on the wooden floor. I was just standing up right on my bed. My brain didn't know what was going on. It didn't make sense. Why was I scared? Why was the door open? Did it open because of the wind? That never happened before. It wasn't even that windy. So how did it open? Why was I scared? Was there something? Was it all a dream? But it didn't feel like a dream. I still remember everything. So I was still sure that it was just my roommate. So I yelled out his name, but there was no response. So I did it again, nothing. I called him on my phone that was beside me. He picked up sounding really tired. I asked him if he was in the house. No, I told you, I'm sleeping as a friend today. I asked him to stay on the phone because I heard somebody in the house. I walk around and nothing is missing or disturbed. Everything is still in the same place. Our front door is closed and it looks just like it was me alone in the house the whole time. I say sorry to him for waking him up and he's a bit angry, but then just ends the call. And I get my keys and wallet and leave the house. I talked with my friends and everybody told me it was sleep paralysis or a panic attack or a dream. But it can't be. Sleep paralysis, I was still able to move for a bit and it was like I couldn't move. My fear made it unable to move. Panic attack, I know how one feels like, and it's not like that. Also, if I have a panic attack, there's always a trigger. I had a traumatic past and if some special things happen to me, like somebody touching my back for too long, I can get a panic attack, but there was no such trigger. Dream, I didn't wake up, like if it would out of a nightmare. Also, I can still remember every detail. These events all happened a few years ago while I was in college, and it was over the course of a few months while I was pet sitting at different times. In college, I did a lot of pet sitting for extra money. It was a great side job, get paid to hang out with dogs and take care of them, nice. A lot of the time I would stay at the person's house because it helped the dog stay calm to have someone with them and because the owner wanted to make sure nothing went wrong with their house while they were gone. So there was one house, it was old and in a very quiet neighborhood, as in, I don't think anyone in the neighborhood was under the age of 55 or 60, and I very rarely even heard cars on the roads. The backyard was very deep and had a ton of trees, so you couldn't see your backyard neighbor because of all the foliage, and both houses to the side were empty. One was under construction, the other was a rental that was empty and stayed empty for months. I'm pretty sure the lady who owned the house I was helping with said the owner was very sick, but again, this was years ago, I may be misremembering. Either way, the neighborhood noise factor was absolutely zero, 
which was great for a big old dog and a student trying to study. Now, onto the weird bits. This house was close enough to my university that I could swing by during my breaks between classes to let the dog out. One day, right around noon, I was standing in the dining room sorting the owner's mail, junk mail ads she had asked me to throw away. On the table, there was an unopened full 20 pound bag of dog food. It was near the center of the table. The walls of the dining room were about three feet from the edge of the table. Enough to walk around and scoot a chair out, but not large. Anyway, I'm standing there, still, sorting the mail. My dog is laying at my feet, also still. There are no cars driving by, no air, no draft. And this 20 pound bag of dog food suddenly goes flying off the table, hard enough to hit the wall. It went parallel to the floor, hit the wall and dropped down. Not like it just fell over and hit the floor. It looked like it had been swept off the table or thrown somehow. But nothing in the entire house was moving. The AC wasn't even on. I remember because I had been considering turning it on for the afternoon in case the dog got hot. I had to get back to class, but I didn't understand how it could have happened. How does a full bag of dog food fly something like four or five feet so fast and hit the wall so hard? The next time I was there, a few weeks later, this owner traveled a bit for work. I was there frequently. I was feeding the dog. Now, this dog is old, so he had a metal food stand for his bowls so he didn't have to bend down so far. You could always hear when he was eating or drinking because the food bowls would clank against the stand. This time, I heard the clanking for a while and thought it was weird that the dog was taking so long to eat his dinner. Usually he was very quick about it. I had been getting my stuff set up to start my homework and could still hear the clanking. I didn't think anything of it. Maybe he was getting a really long drink, I thought. Until I looked down and realized the dog was right next to me and I could still hear the clanking. I got up to see what was going on, but the second I turned the corner and could see the food bowls, the clanking stopped. I checked if the balls were over or under a vent or if a window was open. I checked if there were any cars going by, but I hadn't heard anything. And I was closer to the road getting my homework set up than the dog ball was by a significant amount. Also, the sound was very rhythmic. I thought a dog was eating after all. And it was late enough that the construction crew next door had wrapped up hours before. It also stopped the second I saw the ball. Not before and not after. After that, I asked my girlfriend to come stay with me while I was there. One night, we were hanging out watching Netflix and petting the dog. We decided to go to bed and pause the show. It was about 1am. Just a reminder, both houses to the side were empty and the backside neighbor was too far away to even see. After a moment or so of silence, both my girlfriend and I and the dog I heard a voice speaking. The dog perked his head up and was looking between the front door and back doors. My girlfriend heard the noise from around the front door. I heard it from around the back, near the dining room, with the table and dog bowls. The sound was fairly distinctively someone speaking, but it sounded muffled, like from another room. We looked out the windows, but there were no other lights on in the neighborhood, and we heard no cars. Like I said, old person neighborhood. We didn't see anyone outside, despite the streetlights and clear lines of sight. No one could get into the rental property. It was padlocked up tight, and you could see pretty well through the gutter construction, and there wasn't anyone there either. The dog also couldn't pinpoint where the sound was coming from. Had it been a car driving by or a radio, the house was dead center of a long residential road, and the only other road dead-ended directly into the he this house. As in, if the curtains weren't drawn, oncoming headlights from this road would be blinding. But there weren't any headlights or tail lights on the road, and no car noises that we could hear. Other than a few random things, the last thing that happened was the next time I stayed there. My girlfriend and I were getting ready, she was in the bathroom, I was getting dressed in the bedroom right next door. There was a small hallway between the two doors. 
and we both heard a woman's voice scream my name, but it sounded faint, but the sound was originating from the hallway. My name is fairly unique, and that was also the only sound. Had it been someone outside yelling, which the sound acoustics would have had to be insane for it to sound that way in the interior hallway of another house at least two houses away. I imagine we also would have heard something else they were yelling. Both my girlfriend and I stepped out of the rooms we were in, independently of the other. We both heard it and hadn't said anything ourselves. I don't know if the dog heard this one. He wasn't in my line of sight. The last thing that I remember happening was the last night I stayed there. I was by myself. This one is a little weird because I was asleep, so take that as you will. I easily could have been dreaming, but it was still odd, so I'm including it. Typically, when I fall asleep, nothing in the world will wake me up. I have to be very careful with my alarms. Dogs barking, siren, storms, I've slept through it all. This last night though, I woke up completely. You know how you're normally groggy when you wake up? I'm, no, I'm normally that times 10. But in the middle of the night, I woke up from a dead sleep, not even dreaming that I can remember. Completely and totally awake and lucid. I didn't open my eyes though. Maybe just a bad feeling? I was asleep near the edge of the bed and I heard what I assumed what was the same woman's voice. It sounded like it was coming from the edge of the bed, like someone was crouched there talking to me. This bedroom is far removed from the front and back doors where I heard the sound before, but it was the same, like a woman speaking but from a different room, just somehow closer. I didn't open my eyes at any point. The way I saw it, there was either going to be something there or there wasn't. And either way, it wasn't going to be good. So I just rolled over and went back to sleep. I asked the owner and she said that she definitely thought the place was haunted. Now, people I have told this story to have offered a few suggestions. And yes, this house did have a basement, but the only thing down there was a washer and dryer, which I never used and were never on while I was there. The owner had also had most of the insulation in the house replaced, so I don't know that it could be rats or mice in the walls. I heard many, many squirrels and small animals on the roof, and none of the sounds matched what I heard. None of the appliances did either. Like I said, I stayed there a lot. I got used to the regular sounds of the house, and I imagine the dog was even more used to the regular sounds, and he reacted a few times to the unexpected. Street noise was easy to keep track of, there was very, very little, and the construction crew next door worked regular hours, about 7am to 3pm, and it was a very safe neighbourhood overall, the type of neighbourhood with quaint houses and rose trellises. That gives you an idea. There were a few other odd incidents, weird bruising, lights flickering, creaks, but those are easily explainable. Wood floors, old house with weird lights, and me being in a somewhat unfamiliar place and probably bumping into more things than usual. I wouldn't consider those as anything too odd. At this house, I slept with my door slightly open to let light in. I don't know why I did this exactly, because now I have to sleep in pitch darkness. But I think it was something to do with the fact I was seeing people in the corner of my room. Just purple shadowy figures, normally just walking or moving in a way that looked like they were chatting. It was often just out of the corner of my eye in the corner of my room, or when I had woken from a dream. I chalked it up to sleep paralysis. Then one night, I was laying in bed and everyone had gone to sleep. My room is situated where you have to walk past it down the hall to get to my sister's. And at the end of the hall is the garage or storage area. My sister had already gone to bed, passing me and wishing me good night as she did so. So I was confused when I saw her walk past my doorway again, the tiny bit of light from the nightlight in the hall illuminating her back. I got up curious and called to her. Sister name, what are you up to? She kept walking. I got out of bed and, and peeked my head around the corner. 
I saw her walking toward the garage door, so I called out again. Sister name? She opened the door and shut it behind her. I presumed she was out of it or was just playing a joke on me, so I ran over and opened the garage door. Our garage was a square with nothing to hide behind. It had a small staircase to an area above and the garage below. You could see the area above as you entered. I didn't see her in the upper level, so I ducked into the garage and looked around. She wasn't there. Confused, I wondered if she had somehow hidden in the upper level whilst I looked below and had left. But the door wasn't one that could really close without being heard, so I left the garage and opened my sister's room. She was in bed, her phone on her lap, mindlessly scrolling. She looked up at me, confused. What's up? Did you just walk down the hall then into the garage? How did you leave without me seeing you? I haven't left my bed since you said goodnight to me from your room. Oh, right. Well, I just saw the shadowy silhouette of you go down the hallway and into the garage before vanishing. And you followed it? I thought it was you. Weird. Must be the spooky spirits, I guess. My sister and I never really believed in standard ghosts and had made up the crack theory that the people I saw were just spirits from a different timeline accidentally slipping into ours. So this experience never really scared me. Honestly, I just thought it was cool, lol. This was the last experience I had in that house before leaving and haven't seen any figures in my new place. Though a clock that had no batteries did start ticking during the night. But hey, it was probably just a strange clock. This happened about seven or eight times in the last few months. I would wake up and immediately freak out because I felt someone was in my bedroom. I'd sit up and know exactly where to look, which was either at the end of my bed, in the middle of the room, or on the right side of the bed. The last one is the creepiest because I remember waking up multiple times and feeling someone right next to me on the bed. I'm single and sleep alone. So the feeling of someone else laying right beside me gave me instant panic because no one should be there in the first place. When these encounters happened, I'd sometimes see a black outline for a second after waking up and looking up at the location where I left it. I'm going to be honest and say that I'm actually a big skeptic on the rational side of me doesn't believe in paranormal stuff. But I've actually experienced some paranormal stuff in middle school which I just brushed it off and kept it to myself. But that's another story that I'm certain isn't related to this one. Despite my rational side not believing in this all, the other part is questioning whether or not something is really going on. I told my friends about this presence I've been sensing exactly a month ago, and after that, the whole thing stopped. I thought the presence being just left and I completely forgot all about it. I would wake up normally and not feel anyone in my room anymore. Until today. I woke up around 6am, got myself some water and went back to sleep. And then I saw a dream. I woke up and immediately felt someone on my right side of my bed. Turning around, I saw the presence I had felt before. But this time, the shadowy figure remained there and didn't disappear as usual. Although I should mention that it was one third of the size that I'd seen before. I freaked out and tried to get up, but my body and limbs felt weak and it was difficult to move them around. It wasn't restricting, just heavy and difficult. Still freaking out, I told the presence to leave me alone, even yelled at it, but it didn't. It had this very scary negative spine chilling energy to it and knowing that it was right beside me was not nice. I tried pushing it away and I think I even tried fighting it, but it attacked me back. It bit my fingers and I could feel it, like literally feel its teeth sinking into my bones. I panicked more. It all felt super real and I was 100% sure this was all reality. But despite it all, I wondered if perhaps I was experiencing sleep paralysis. I started thinking back to all my Google searches about sleep paralysis and spirits and how to get rid of them. 
Those were the two thoughts that I had about the situation at hand. I kept repeating to myself, it's all a dream, it's not real. And I even sunk my nails into my arm to basically pinch myself awake. But nothing happened, which confirmed that it was real, which it clearly wasn't. I finally managed to stand up from the bed and decided to get away from the shadow, but it followed me. I ran all the way to the kitchen and then I woke up for real in the same pose I had woken up in my dream. I think it was a sleep paralysis or something between that and being half awake. I've never experienced sleep paralysis before, never ever. I've also never seen a dream as detailed and realistic as this one. I even saw my phone charging right beside my bed, which I put to charge at 6 a.m. after getting my water. But maybe it was more than just a dream. As a child, I used to have these kind of next level deja vus. I would have a dream just once, and sometimes the same dream many times over, and I knew this sequence of events was going to happen. I would remember the words being said, the vibe of the moment, the way the ball was going to bounce. I would then remember that sequence over and over again, sometimes for months, sometimes for years. I would always think to myself, oh yeah, that thing, I wonder when it's finally going to happen, because it got annoying at times. Most of the dreams were stuff like knowing exactly what kind of kick-ass save I was going to make at a soccer goal. But some were more sinister. I knew, for example, that I was going to get bullied at some point, and that I'd have no friends for months and months. At about 10, I prepared for this the only way I knew how, which was inventing soccer mini-games so that I could still play soccer when the time of no friends came around. And sure enough, I did get bullied years later. All of these dreams, or whatever you might call them, came true, just as I knew they would. But one of them hasn't yet. It's by far the scariest one of them. It's adult me, saw the dreams many times as a kid, and my dad in a park. We talk about the fact that my mom will be here soon, and we will then go to a certain place. I can't remember where, but instead of going there as a group, my dad takes an alternative route by the shore so he can see some of the boats. He walks away from us down this boulevard with tall trees on each side. When he is about 50 meters away from us, walking with his hands behind his back, I look back at him and for some reason know that I will never see him again, and my heart is filled with pain as if he had just died. I know those were the last words he ever spoke to me, and for some odd reason, I'm certain that there is nothing I can do to stop whatever is going to happen. I used to cry every time I reminded myself of this as a kid. I remember this sometimes when we were in a situation close to this, you know, in a park near water somewhere. I always get emotional in my head, sometimes even a tear. My father served in the Royal Military Police and left the army four years ago after 30 years of service. We're from the UK. My father had always been a very serious man, worked very hard, and the little humour he has is very dry. He's travelled the world with his work and experienced all manner of life. He's the last person to believe in the paranormal. So just over 10 years ago, he was on a posting in Germany the last of the British troops before all the bases were closed. He had moved into a big old house. The house was where Hermann Goering, head of the German Luftwaffe, lived. My father lived there with three other high-ranking officers from different regiments, all of which mostly kept to themselves. After four months, he happened to have a weekend alone in the house. In the evening, he was sat downstairs watching TV, when he heard footsteps coming down the stairs and into the hallway. He thought nothing of it, until the fourth time he had heard someone come down the stairs. He assumed one of his housemates had returned from leave early. He had gone to look, but there was nothing there, and after checking the rest of the house, he went to bed. The following two nights, 
the same thing happened, but my father put the noise down to it being an old house with creaky floors. Monday morning, he reported the noise, along with the draft in the bathroom and the leaky tap, to the site's maintenance office. His housemates had returned, and he had forgotten all about it. A couple of weeks later, he happened to mention the noises he had heard to the old German cleaner. She said in the most matter-of-fact way, that was Cedric. It turns out Cedric was a Polish prisoner of war who used to work in the house. He was sadly beaten to death in the house and it was believed his spirit has remained in the house ever since. The cleaner told my father that Cedric walks the stairs early every evening and makes occasional noises or gusts of wind during the day. My father told us occasionally about noises, etc. that could have been Cedric, but none of us believed him. He learned the ways of Cedric. There was never any flair or imagination to his stories. Just simply, there was a ghost that wanders around my house. Six months later, I went to Germany for a work experience placement near to where my father was based. He picked me up from the airport and took me to the house where he lived. I stayed the night there and there was no sign or mention of this so-called Cedric. In the morning, I was going for a shower when my father said, don't worry about the wind, it's just Cedric, but he means no harm. I thought he was winding me up, but I still put a towel under the door to avoid any drafts. I had just about finished my shower. About to go any tell, my father his made up ghost doesn't exist. When this breeze or gust of wind, whatever it was, blew right through me. It was like nothing I had experienced or known since then. It left me cold for the rest of the day. I grabbed my towel and raced out into the bedroom. I got changed, packed my bags and walked out of the house. I believe it to be the only paranormal thing I've experienced. Thinking back, I cannot see how that could have been a draft or my father winding me up. I don't know what it was, but I do know it was definitely a presence in that house. My grandparents have been married for over 65 years and my grandmother never worked a day in her life except keeping up the house and taking care of four kids and five grandkids. My grandfather was a carpenter in the Air Force for 20 years and retired and went to work in the paper mill till he was 65. They got married when they were 16 and the only wedding present they got was a hand-built oak chest of drawers that a family friend made them. Let me tell you, it took three men to pick it up. It's that heavy. My grandmother died of scleroderma a few years ago and left my grandfather behind to fend for himself. This man has never had to lift a knife to butter on bread or cook a potato when she was alive. Sadly, he died a year later of heart attack, but I think it was heartache. They left all the grandkids money, but one of our uncles took the money and ran and hasn't been seen since. I wanted something of theirs so that I'd have something to remember them by and I could possibly pass it down to one of my kids. So I took the chest of drawers. It took three of us to put it on a U-Haul and get it home. I was excited to have something of theirs and might I remind you, almost 70 years old and the only thing that was updated on it was probably the handles. Fast forward to a month after having it. It's about 1am, I'm laying in bed and the wife is sleeping next to me. And I suffer from insomnia anyways. My son's room is cater corner from our room across the hallway, and the bathroom is directly across us with the night lights. The light is just bright enough so that you can see to go to the bathroom. I see a shadow walk by and block out the light for a sec, and I freeze, not knowing what to do. And I wait to see if my dog will bark, but nothing. I end up getting up to find nothing in the house. This happens over the next few months. Sometimes the shadow stops and looks at me or just keeps walking. One night, I'm putting my five-year-old at the time to bed and he tells me that his great-grandmother was talking to him, which he's never met her. He's telling me how much that he doesn't like her, but he won't tell me what she said to him. My wife never did like the dresser and had been wanting me to get rid of it for some time now. 
It sits in the spare room with a blanket over the mirror. You might ask, why did I put a blanket over it? Well, you see, ever since I did that whatever is on the other side of that mirror has stopped showing up in my house. Now, I have only seen shadows and my wife never saw anything, but it seemed to be evil when it came to my son. The shit he would tell me sometimes would make a dead person wake up. As a child at the age of four, my family moved into a newly constructed house in the middle of Tennessee. And this is where my first contact with entities happened. One of the first nights I was there, I will always remember walking into my parents' walk-in closet. As I walked in, I felt a cool, refreshing wind blow over me and saw an entity that looked like a man made of TV static standing in the doorway to the attic. I felt completely at peace and happy. However, I ended up passing out in the closet and pissing all over my mom's shoes. Later on, as I grew to be about 14, I saw a burned face and manacled hands floating into my room by my door. I remembered thinking that this thing hated me and everything about me, and the intensity of its malevolence made me pass out. The next day, I would walk through the area where the entity appeared and occasionally see it out of the corner of my eyes. I would routinely see shadows moving out of the corner of my eyes of men in big hats and cats and dogs. One day I saw these shadows and all of a sudden my sisters screamed bloody murder. I ran into their room and saw movement out of my peripherals fleeing. My sister said a big cat, not our cats, jumped on her and pinned her down. Both of my sisters saw it as well. One day when I was babysitting my sisters, the oven, brand new, suddenly locked and caught fire within, not responding to button inputs or anything. The fire alarm system went off and I called my dad to come home and he turned the gas off under the oven. There was no explanation for the oven incidents whatsoever. My friend, a local, told me that at the site of our house, three older houses had burned down in that spot. Strange occurrences continued at the house, doors opening and shutting. My sister told me recently that she saw once I left for the military. I hadn't told her about my face experience that she had seen out of her window while she was reading on her phone, lightning flash and the silhouette of a ladder falling. And then a mangled face pressed itself to the screen of the window. She knew the face hated her as well. The basement where I moved as a 16 year old also was a weird environment. I once dreamed that the walls were closing in and ran upstairs in my dream to wake up on the couch upstairs. My best friend and I under no influence of drugs, also simultaneously hallucinated that we were in a McDonald's. The basement seemed to always amplify hysteria and cause people to act out of character. At a party for high school students we threw, a normally mild-mannered kid freaked and for no apparent reason punched a pregnant classmate. Also, I had a scary dream about my grandpa being a giant in my basement laughing at me. The next day, I found out he had died that night. I don't know if this is relevant, but he was a mason. I dread visiting my parents at this point because of this house. While they were very kind and loving when I was younger, by my teens, they had, been, they had become abusive narcissists and boundary crossing maniacs. And quite frankly, I'm worried about them both. My dad, a formerly a devout Christian, had been visiting spirit mediums, which I found out through a reliable source. They also refused to admit our house is haunted. And that's simply the house. I also had a crazy Ouija board experience in high school. Me and a group of friends went to the oldest building at school and started playing. For some reason, at the time, I was skeptical about this process and not taking it seriously. Maybe to impress the ladies. Anyway, as the five of us started to play, we asked, is there anyone there? Y-E-S. What's your name? C-O-B. Then I started laughing about it. Don't worry y'all, it's Cun on the cob man. He's related to the jolly green giants, don't you know? And suddenly the planchet whips to no. Corpses of Belial. 
I'm not sure if that's the name exactly. It was something really similar. Don't sleep alone. Except for you, me. Then we asked it, are you a good spirit? It says, no, don't sleep alone. We are legion. So obviously we try to say goodbye and the planchet whips in infinity symbols across the board. We kept begging it to leave, but it kept saying no. And it says, Brendan says hi from hell. As soon as it says that, my friend whips her hands off the planchet and starts bawling. Apparently that was the name of her dead brother. No one knew about Brandon before this session. We eventually got it to say goodbye after four hours and before we signed off, the spirit said things will be very bad for all of you. Strange events started happening to all of us, including me, even though it told me I was okay to sleep alone. I dreamt I saw myself sewn to the ceiling of the basement that night from flayed skin and was woken up several times by the sounds of chains dragging. The next day, me and the rest of the group were blessed by my friend's dad's girlfriend using incense. However, she said she sensed intense evil energy hovering around us. In the next three years, I was arrested three times, went to jail twice, was suspended from high school, kicked out of college, almost died in a car accident, and was forced to join the Navy to avoid criminal charges. Although the intensity in my life has died down a lot since then, I often feel followed and watched and see dead cats out of the corner of my eyes as well. My questions would be, what would you guys' expert opinion be on these happenings around the potential of a curse? What would be the curse of these occurrences? What can I do to protect my family and myself? Do you think there could be a root occult cause of my parents' personality change? I should start by saying that I'm 18, female, and that my parents are divorced, and have been divorced since I was three. I lived in Texas with my mom until I was eight, and I believe it's when I moved back to California, where I was born, that this experience started happening. I'm not really sure when it exactly happened. It honestly could have been started when I was living in Texas, but sometimes in the morning, while me and my mom would get ready, I would hear a very distinctive ding sound. It sounded a lot like a bell, but always caught my attention too, and always sounded exactly the same. I assumed it would have come from my mom's room, since she was the only other person in the house with me. I always thought it was a noise from her dresser, because she had glass plates holding her jewelry and perfume. But I'm not sure if I ever saw her at her dresser whenever I would hear the ding sound. I remember asking her one day about the dinging noise and what in her room made it. And she said nothing in her room made that noise. Like I said, it was something so clear and loud to me. And immediately when I heard it, I recognized it. I just brushed it off because it wasn't every day either and just happened once in the morning. But I did heavily associate my mom to this bell-like sound. A few years later, my dad and step planned a New Year's trip with their friends to go to Arizona. So basically, they rented a huge house where everyone would stay. And it was mostly for the grown-ups to drink and do whatever, while me and my younger siblings would try to entertain ourselves. I believe I was 14 at the time, but the most important thing to remember is that I'm with my dad, and my mom is back in California. Me and my siblings shared a room. Me and my brother got the single beds in the room, and my sister slept on an air mattress in between us. The room we were in was connected to the kitchen, and the other rooms were nowhere close to ours. Being a teenager, I was up late on my phone during the night while my two siblings were fast asleep. I believe it was the first night, but I was doing something on my phone, I can't remember what exactly, and I heard the ding come from somewhere in the house. It did sound pretty far away in the house, so I thought maybe someone had the same thing as my mom but it was dead silent in the house, and most likely, everyone was asleep. It was a quick ding, and I couldn't put any thought into it. The next night was probably the scariest experience I've ever had. It was around 1 or 2 a.m., and I was on my phone, and probably the only one awake at that hour. 
I was just minding my business when I heard the ding again, coming from somewhere in the house. Of course, I noticed it, but went back to what I was doing. Then I heard it again, and again, and again. The same ding sounding exactly the same, and the pause between each ding was the same. I don't remember ever hearing the ding more than once at a time, but it just kept going, and then I realised it was moving. I could hear it coming from somewhere distant in the house, and coming closer to where I was. It sounded like it was floating to me, or something was carrying it to me. Now I should say that the door was wide open to the room I was in, and whilst froze, once I realised it was moving. I never felt so much fear in my life, and when I heard the dinging entering the kitchen, I hid, hid under the covers and tried to pretend I was asleep. It entered my room, and it was super loud at this point. Granted, I was shaking and terrified, but the dinging never moved from the door of the bed, and stayed there for about two minutes, just dinging over and over again. I believe it was watching me. Finally, I heard it leave the room and disappeared into the house, and I fell asleep right after. I should also say, I never heard any footsteps or anything other than the dinging, just the damn dinging over and over again. I told my parents about it in the morning, but they didn't believe me at all. I haven't heard it again ever since that night, and it's a certain ding that I've never heard anywhere else, and hopefully won't ever hear again. I really have no idea what it could be. The only conclusion I have is maybe it was something that followed me until I was 14. It couldn't have been connected to my mom since she wasn't even in Arizona at the time. I sometimes regret not looking up from under the covers or even taking a video so I could have audio of this noise. If anyone has any idea what it could be, please let me know. I can't find anything about it and I've been curious about this for so long.